Bellator 251 on CBS Sports Network, a light heavyweight main event between Corey Anderson and Melvin Manoff. Anderson looking to make a statement in his Bellator debut after 15 fights in the UFC. Pick it up early first. Anderson working a double leg. Gets the big slam right there on the 44-year-old Manoff. Later in the round, laying some heavy ground and pound on his opponent is Anderson. Round one, all Corey Anderson. Early in round two, Anderson picking up where he left off. Drags Manoff to the ground, and then late in round two, lands four massive elbows. The opponent not defending himself, bloodied, battered, and taken care of. Corey Anderson dominates in his Bellator debut, winning via second round TKO and picking up his 14th career victory. Here's a look at the tail of the tape between these two. Manoff, obviously a storied knockout artist in this game, but the young gun Corey Anderson at 205, looking for a title shot. We will see if he gets one. We are joined now by CBS Sports Combat Analyst Luke Thomas. Luke, Bellator action on a Thursday night. This main event featured a dominant performance out of Corey Anderson. It's really what Vegas expected out of him. He was a heavy favorite, and I think what a lot of fight fans expected out of him. Uh, takes care of business, does what he needs to. What was your reaction to the means by which he got it done? He looked awesome. I mean, look, I'm not going to call the the fight a, a, a mismatch. I mean, in some ways it was. Anderson, very much in his prime. Manhoff, you know, won uh, maybe two fights away from retirement, taking a lot of damage in his career, and not exactly the best anti-wrestler. So this was a fight that Anderson was basically expected to win, and he did, as you indicated, and showed the footage there. However, you have to ask yourself, if you are favored to win that much, uh, how did you look doing it? Did you do all the things that someone of an elite status could do? He did. He didn't take hardly any damage. He controlled the fight in terms of the location. The fight existed on his terms in terms of the uh, where they were standing and when they only struck when he wanted to. He had a man who have confused about where he, whether he was coming or whether he was going. He just absolutely was the maestro of everything here. He had his opponent wrapped around his finger and basically was able to do almost whatever he wanted to. And this is the other part. You say, well, if he was in that much control, why didn't he just win in the first? Because the smart veteran like Corey Anderson, even though he's still kind of young, he takes his time. He does not rush things. And so to me, getting a second round stoppage in absolutely dominating fashion, maybe taking a punch, getting takedowns almost whenever you wanted it, vicious ground and pound, smart, patient, and then lethal in the end. That's about as good as a fighter as you're going to get in terms of, you know, having all of those bases covered. And so I thought he did everything he was supposed to and, and maybe just a little bit more. Uh, a statement to the powers that be with Bellator inside the ring and then uh, inside the octagon, excuse me, and then once they do call the fight and they raise his hand, he goes and he calls for a shot at this title in the light heavyweight division. From what you saw on Thursday night and the resume that carries over from the UFC, is this a fighter deserving of a title shot in Bellator? Yeah, I would argue that he wasn't. I mean, I saw some folks saying, well, he only has one win in Bellator. Is that really enough to merit a title shot? Well, yeah, it kind of is. I mean, understand something. Bellator signed this guy because he is still, as I indicated, very much in his prime. Look how good he looked tonight. Look how good he's looked throughout the majority of his career. Yes, he's had some losses. Okay. But he's fought, fought excuse me, a lot of tough guys. And more often than not, he got his hand raised. And so here he comes into Bellator, absolutely thrashes Melvin Manoff. And now you look at the rest of the division, you say, okay, Vadim Nemkov just beat Ryan Bader and beat him handily. Who should be next? You could make the case if you really wanted to that someone like Corey Anderson should fight fellow UFC veteran Phil Davis. But here's the problem with that argument. Number one, if Anderson loses, you lose anybody else who's sort of like your obvious new contender, fresh matchup guy. There's no one else you could really name because Phil has already fought Vadim and lost so it's like why would you even make that fight i'm not saying that fight shouldn't be made down the road or by itself wouldn't be good it just doesn't make any sense for bellator's light heavyweight division so i don't know if Corey anderson can beat vadim nemkov but i think he earned an opportunity and i would love to see it because i think this is the best Corey anderson in terms of the trajectory or his career we've ever seen vadim nemkov is a handful but so is Corey anderson so may the best man win i'd love to see it and, and i suspect bellator will actually make it a dominant performance in inside the cage for Corey Anderson and always a dominant performance by our Luke Thomas. Thank you, Luke. Anytime.
And for more from Luke and our guy Brian Campbell, be sure to tune in to the Morning Combat with Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, live on YouTube. You can also download and subscribe the podcast anywhere pods are found. Middleweight bout. Bellator 251 featured Austin Vanderford and Vinicius De Jesus. Vanderford, the husband of MMA star Paige Van Zant, looking to extend his perfect record to 10 and 0, 3 and 0 in Bellator. Pick it up round one. Vanderford connecting with a big overhand right to De Jesus. He eats it, stands in the pocket. Later in the first round, Vanderford catches the kick of De Jesus, gets the takedown. Then in round two, Vanderford back into Jesus down, gets him against the cage, shoots for the takedown, gets it. Two points in traditional wrestling. We score it different here in Bellator. Dominant round two for Vanderford. Then early in the third round, pumping about with the jab, shoots for the takedown, secures it. Late in the third round, Vanderford just laying some heavy shots on the ground, leaving to Jesus in a pool of his own blood. Uh, this one would go the distance, although Austin Vanderford winning via a dominant decision and improving his record to a perfect 10-0. All right, here's a look at that fighter profile for Austin Vanderford, a great fighter in his own right. Uh, would not want to be at that dinner table. Husband of former UFC fighter Paige Van Zant, undefeated as a professional, and has five of his last six fights. Those wins have come via knockout or submission. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.